scientists are one step closer to repairing damaged cardiac tissue following a heart attack. Researchers report growing heart tissue in the lab that beats and contracts like real heart muscles. The tissue was grown on a scaffold made of nano-sized cylinders of carbon, known as carbon nanotubes, according to an article in ACS Nano. This is ACS Breakthrough Science, research in the news. In our paper, we try to make conductive biomaterials by incorporating uh, carbon nanotubes inside hydrogels and being able to use the resulting um, gels for directing cell behavior. And particularly, we focused on cardiac tissue to be able to take heart cells, put them on these conductive materials, and use electrical stimulation to induce them to further differentiate and make a functional cardiac patch or a cardiac piece of tissue. There are a lot of people who are waiting for heart transplants, and unfortunately for anyone who gets a heart transplant, someone else has to die. When you basically have a heart, um, heart attack, it blocks the blood flow to a particular piece of a heart muscle. What will that do, of course, is that it will um, basically kill the cells in that region. And because of that, you have a piece of dead tissue that results in um, either immediate death or actually it induces, um, really um, makes the rest of the heart work a lot harder, which is also not good. We've developed our literally pieces of cardiac tissue that spontaneously beat. And in the video that you mentioned, what you see is actually this one piece of this cardiac tissue that has rolled up into a, a form that can pump liquid. So it's actually, it's not a heart, but it actually can pump liquid. And as a result, if you put this in a, in a, in a solution, it actually propagates itself and moves itself through the solution. Uh, there's other applications where engineered tissues could be useful. So for example, one can think about being able to make human tissues on which you can test drugs or chemicals and be able to see whether these drugs um, are toxic or whether they do their intent intended function without um, affecting the cells in, in the ways that you don't want. We think that future applications of our materials include other things like being able to potentially um, make scaffolds for spinal cord regeneration or peripheral nerve regeneration or other kind of musculoskeletal systems. One of the things that excites me about it is that it's a very, I think, nice integration of areas that normally haven't been integrated before. So there has been a lot of work in using, of course, synthetic materials and natural materials for different biomedical applications, but the integration of nanomaterials with unique properties into these systems hasn't been utilized as well. So I think this integration, I think, is interesting and has a lot of potential applications in the future for other types of nanomaterials integration in, in, in biomaterial systems as well. Uh, and I think the other thing is really there, there's a lot of potential in making these kinds of materials for real world problems. And I think the area of medicine and tissue engineering could benefit greatly from these systems. Mm -hmm.